In this video, we talk about inductors. We see what an inductor is, how it works, and what it is used for. The basic principle to understand the inductor working is the interconnection between electricity and magnetism, which are two aspects of the same phenomenon and it's called electromagnetism. The phenomenon is completely described by the four Maxwell equations, but here we see just what we need to understand inductors. We can start from a charge. A charge creates an electric field around itself, and if the charge moves, the electric field around is modified. This happens because part of the electric field is transformed into a magnetic field. As you can see, the magnetic field is perpendicular to the movement direction. So, a moving charge creates both an electric field and a magnetic field. Consequently, an easy way to generate a magnetic field is to pass a current through a conductor. If we now choose another geometry for the conductor, we see different orientation of the magnetic lines of force. If we now add some turns to our initial ring, we have finally our inductor. Adding a lot of turns, we generate a strong magnetic field inside the solenoid. You see the magnetic lines of force go from the south pole to the north one. It is possible to calculate the magnetic field generated from a current, and this is the formula for the magnetic field in the center of the solenoid. Mu0 is the magnetic permeability of the air, n is the number of turns, L is the length of the device, and I is the electric current. But until now, we don't understand why this device is called inductor. What is induced? And where? To understand this, we see an experiment in which you see that a current is generated moving a magnet near a conductor, or inside a solenoid in our case. We measure it with the galvanometer in the picture. Note that the current is generated just when the magnet is moving. No movement, no current. With similar experiment, Faraday realized its first law. An electromotive force will be induced in a wire placed in a very magnetic field. This electromotive force is a voltage applied on the conductor which creates the current we measure. The varying magnetic field is generated by the moving of the magnet. The Faraday's second law is more accurate and states that the magnitude of the EMF is proportional to the rate of change of the magnetic field in which the wire is placed. Actually, what change is the magnetic flux, so the intersection of the magnetic lines of force with the area A of the conductor ring. So we can write the induction equation or the EMF equation where the Greek letter phi is the magnetic flux, which is the vectorial product of the magnetic lines of force and the area of the ring. Note the minus symbol. It says that the EMF induced on the ring is opposite to the variation of the flux. This clarification came from length. So, a conductor sees an electromotive force induced equal to the variation of the magnetic flux but opposite in sign. So the EMF induced tries to oppose the variation of the magnetic flux. Note that a moving charge generates a magnetic field and a moving magnetic field generates an electromotive force, so electric field, because an EMF in an inductor is simply a voltage. This to explain the inner link between electric and magnetic field, which are considered the same phenomenon, called electromagnetism. Now we can back to our inductor or our coil. If a direct current passes through the coil, a magnetic field B is created. The magnetic field is proportional to the current and to the other geometric characteristics, mu0, n, and l. If we now imagine to pass a variable current or AC current in the coil, a variable magnetic field is created. But a variable magnetic field passing through the coil ring creates a variable magnetic flux. So an EMF or a voltage is created in every ring. So for the whole coil, the total EMF is minus N times the flux variation. 
This induced voltage tries to oppose the changing. So if the current is increasing, the EMF creates a current which opposes the surplus and if the current is decreasing, the EMF creates a current which always opposes this changing. Finally, we saw where the inductor name came from. Inductor is a device which exploits the induction effect in which a variable current creates a variable magnetic field. So a variable magnetic flux which in turn generates an EMF or a voltage. It exploits the self-induction phenomenon. Remembering that the flux is magnetic field times area of the ring, we can write the EMF making a split seat B and replacing B with magnetic field formula in function of the current, getting the final version in which induced voltage on the inductor is function of the variation of the current through some geometric factor. These geometric factors are called inductance and they depend on the area, the length, the square power of the number of turns and the air permeability. So we have now the fundamental equation describing the inductor. The voltage across the inductor is equal to the variation of the current passing in the coil and the constant L called inductance. The bigger L, the bigger the voltage induced. So L is the capacity of the device of inducing a voltage. It depends on the permeability of the air, so if we want to raise L, we can raise the permeability, putting a piece of iron inside the coil, because it has a bigger permeability in respect to the air. But the easiest way to raise the inductance L is to raise the number of turns of the coil, because there is a square relation. The equation states that a variable current creates a voltage, and the bigger is the variation, the bigger is the voltage induced. Because of the minus sign, this voltage tries to oppose the changing current. So the inductor is a device which doesn't like changing. It always tries to oppose the changing. It doesn't have any issue with the, a direct current. It creates a static magnetic field and the voltage self-induced across the inductor is zero because no variation, no voltage induced. But if a variable current passes through the coil, the inductor tries to oppose the variation, so a voltage is induced to oppose the changing current. Self-induction is created in every closed circuit with variable current, but usually is negligible except when we have a very high frequency. The inductor is the device which concentrates and creates great magnetic field magnifying the EMF created by the magnetic flux variation. This behavior is exploited in electric and electronic circuit. Now we see how an inductor works in a simple circuit. First, let's see the current in this simple circuit with a static voltage generator and a resistor. At the time zero when we switch the voltage on, instantly the current goes to the value V divided by R. If we now insert an inductor in the circuit, when we switch the direct voltage on, the current behavior changes because this time the inductor opposes the changing. So, at the instant zero, the circuit tries to force a current on the inductor, creating an increasing magnetic field which generates an e EMF which opposes the passing current. So, the current cannot go instantly to the value V divided by R. At the zero instant, the voltage induced on the inductor opposes completely the voltage applied to V, so current in the circuit is zero. But in the next instant, the magnetic field inside the inductor is not zero anymore, and beside the magnetic field is still rising, the variation is less, so the flux changing is less, and the induced voltage V1 is less than V. In this moment, a current starts to flow equal to V minus V1 divided by R. In the next instant, the magnetic field is still rising, but always less fast, so the variation is always less, and the induced voltage V2 is less than V1, so now in the circuit flows a bigger current I2. 
and so on. The current doesn't reach instantly the final value v divided by r, but slowly, according to an exponential law. How much slowly depends on the constant l divided by r, so it depends on the inductance l. Bigger the inductance, longer the time. The voltage across the in inductor follows an opposite exponential law. Here you have all you need to understand inductor behavior. Inductor opposes current flowing, but only in variable condition. After a while, in stable condition, current can flow and inductor doesn't oppose any resistance. So inductor is like a short or a wire in DC condition. But when we connect it to power supply or when we disconnect it, then an EMF is created to oppose the changing. So in the first instance, we have a variable condition and the flowing of the current is opposed for a while. But how long is a while? Intuitively, the larger is the inductance, the longer is the time we need to reach the stable value of the current circuit, because the inductance generates a larger EMF to oppose the flowing of the current. So, at the end, the larger the inductance, the more time we need to reach the same level of current. On the contrary, with smaller inductance, we need less time to reach the final current, so smaller inductors are faster in some way. They reach the final current faster. Now, let's imagine we have a variable supply voltage and we analyze the circuit along the time. The input signal can be this oscillating between two voltages on a precise frequency. It always varies the same way. What happens to the inductor voltage? Let's imagine having a low frequency square wave as input signal. In this case, as we saw before, the voltage follows an exponential law to go to zero. There is like a spike initially because the current goes from zero to a finite value, so it has a big instant change. So the induced voltage is big, but but soon decreases with an exponential law reaching the zero. When the input voltage goes from V to zero, there is another big instant change, so another spike is created, but this time with an opposite sign because the input voltage is decreasing, so the current is decreasing. And so on, every time voltage changes, it creates an inductive spike. You can see at low frequency the inductor voltage is mostly zero apart from spikes. But if we increase the frequency, the exponential decreasing doesn't have enough time to reach the zero. And the voltage in the inductor follows better the input signal. If we increase again the frequency, we get a voltage on the inductor with a shape similar to the input voltage. The exponential decreasing cannot start that the input signal is already changed, so the input signal is better followed. This happens because the frequency is high in respect to the inductance L. If we lower L, the exponential law would have a faster decreasing, and we came back in the low frequency situation. We saw inductors behave differently at different frequencies. At low frequency, the self-induced voltage V is weak, and at high frequency, the self-induced voltage V1 is stronger than V. For ohm low, the bond between current and voltage is the impedance, so ohm low becomes V equal XL times I. XL is the inductor impedance and it measures the resistance to the flowing of the current at different frequencies. This is the impedance formula of an ideal inductor and you see it, it is proportional to the frequency. The larger the frequency, the larger the impedance, so the voltage across it. Here you can see also that another way to lower the impedance is lower the inductance. The smaller the inductance, the lower the impedance and the lower the voltage across the inductor. At zero frequency, the voltage across the inductor is zero and the inductor behaves like a short. So this is the frequency characteristics of an inductor. You can see 
as the frequency increases, the impedance increases as well, so high resistance to the flow of the current. So at very high frequency, inductor behaves like an open circuit because it fully opposes to the flow of the current. On the contrary, at very low frequency, inductor shows very low impedance and it behaves like a short or a wire. Possible use of inductors is in filters. This circuit, for example, cuts all the high frequency. We saw it already and we understand that at high frequency the inductor opposes to any variation of the current, so the fast variation of the input signal is cut off. At low frequency, the inductor opposes weakly to the changing current, so the input signal can pass to the output almost unchanged. So the frequency characteristics is this one. This is called low pass filter because only low frequency can pass through. In this case we see the high frequency part of Vin passes through to V out because at high frequency Vin drops wholly on the inductor. As we said, at high frequency inductors oppose strongly the current, so we cannot have current variation in the coil, so the variation passes completely to the output. At low frequency inductor allows the current changing, and it behaves like a short, so the voltage drops wholly on the resistor and no voltage pass through, so the low frequency voltage is cut off. So the frequency characteristics is this one, and the circuit is called I-pass filter. Filters are not the most frequent ways to use inductors. Inductors are mostly used for motors where we exploit the Lorentz force, dynamo, transformers where we exploit the induction, LC circuit as for example in old radio for synchronization. Please leave me a comment and let me know if you liked this video. Make sure you put the thumb up, click the notification bell and subscribe to my channel.